the dream, your dream can exist anywhere. And there's no one country that has a monopoly on making dreams come true. And we're back with Ken Marks, the exotic foreigner in Kazakhstan. Okay, Ken, when you tell people that you are a U.S. born American citizen and you're planning to give up your citizenship, I am sure that they have questions, whether you're telling your family or friends or even foreigners in Kazakhstan. What are some of the responses, some of the questions, some of the issues that they bring up when you tell people what your plans are? Uh, it's always met with a shocked expression on their face mm-hmm. and then they start barraging me with questions. Most common questions they'll ask are superficial things such as, won't you miss your favorite food? Because many people are proud of their national dishes, so they figured, won't you miss your cookings? And I usually reply with, we're in the 21st century and we have technology. We can always go on YouTube or check on some recipes on how to cook something (laughs) from whatever, whenever, or wherever. And then other things like, what about your friends, your family, the language, culture, etc. There was one particular person that I had a nice, interesting discussion with, and his question was, won't you miss speaking English? And I told him, no, not really. But you live here in Kazakhstan, so that means you have to learn Russian. And I said, yes, I would like to be fluent as much as possible. He said, but won't you miss speaking the English language? Isn't it easier in English when you communicate with people? And I said, yes, it's true that I grew up with this language, but I I don't mind learning something new or assimilating a little bit because I chose to come here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nobody forced me to come and live here. Right, right. right. If I come here, I've already made the decision that – I'm going to be giving up my comfort zone and I will have to adapt to some things. Learning Russian, respecting the local customs, respecting the different religion, respecting the food. They, these are the things that I will have to learn about, but that's okay with me because that's something I chose. You know, a lot of people just can't understand that way of thinking simply because a lot of people on the planet are looking for the easy way through life, not to have to change, not to have to do anything too demanding. A lot of Americans who may go to the Philippines to look for uh, a wife, and one of the reasons the Philippines is high up there on the list is because English being widely spoken there. And of course, you know, I understand that they don't want to have to learn a new new language, but there are some of us for whom that's not a deal breaker. So I choose to go to Vietnam or or you choose to go to Kazakhstan or whatever, because there's something about that culture that supersedes the language barrier There's or the differences in food. So it's it's not like a, a, an assignment that you have to now learn, you know, Kazakh or you have to now start eating differently. You know, it's not like someone is forcing you to do this. As you said, this is a choice you've made to come here because there are certain things that are more important. But I stress that just because it is a different way of thinking, and a lot of people would rather just make life easy rather than having to do things that they perceive are more more difficult. When I first arrived in uh, Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, I felt very hopeless because uh, I couldn't speak uh, Kyrgyz or Russian. I couldn't read anything. But I put myself in that situation because I wanted to experience it. So what I said was you know what, I don't have to stay in such a condition. So I simply just bought a a book, How to Speak Russian, and I just practice. And eventually, um, I keep practicing, 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 and I I was able to speak enough to where people can understand me. And what I've known is that there are a lot of people, many people like you and me, but they don't speak English. Instead of making them work harder to communicate with you, you should show them that you're putting the initiative by learning their language and they can understand that, oh, you know, we're meant to meet because you you speak my language and you put a lot of effort. That means you really want to be here. You're really, really interested in my culture. Right. And this is 
thing that I want to show the world to everyone. That, Absolutely. Uh, why I travel. Um, yeah. When I travel, and whether it's to Vietnam or to China or wherever, I believe the onus is on me to speak the language so that I'm understood. You know, I'm just one foreigner out of millions of people, but I'm in their country. So I make it my responsibility to learn their language. When I land, the first thing I ask the immigration agent is how to say please and thank you. And that gets me through, you know, 90% of the interaction with people. And just from hearing a foreigner say those simple words, as you said, goes a long way. It raises eyebrows and they immediately know that you're making an effort. As simple as that is to me, you know, it's a simple thing. Just saying please and thank you and hello, good morning in the language puts them at ease and it opens the doors to much more interaction and opportunities and acceptance, as opposed to people who believe that the world owes them to speak English, <laughs> who uh, believe that it's the foreigner's role to, to accommodate them as a tourist, which, you know, I, I guess I can understand that in a way if, if tourism is the thing, but but uh, I don't look, you know, I don't look at it that way. Um, so. In anything you do in life, if you really want to reap the benefits and rewards in life you have to put in the effort so it's just like when you go to the gym if you want to be a professional athlete or you just want to gain a little muscle or you want to have a fit body when you go to exercise for the first time it's going to be very difficult when you're trying to lift weights or you're trying to run or if you're doing some kind of diet to help lose some weight uh, it's always going to be really hard and it takes effort and time but the more you do it the easier it becomes and then you'll finally get the results you want and it's the same with everything in life these guys who go to philippines or some country where it's, you know, english is known like you said you're just going to be another thousandth foreigner that just speaks english whereas if you spoke the local language for example or if you knew something about their culture, you you will get the best um, experience in that country if you did learn, if you put in the effort. Into and it's not a difficult thing to do. But again, the reason you are going there is because you are interested. So the, the desire to want to learn to speak the language, the desire to want to know about the culture is inherently there, innately there. So it makes it easier for you. But it, like again, if you are being forced, if you are suddenly kidnapped yeah. and thrown into Kazakhstan, then everything is going to be a challenge and a chore because you don't want to be there. Now, yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot here, but... Have you actually told any of your relatives <laughs> of your yes. plans? And if yes. so, how did that go? So this is probably going to be difficult for people from non-Western cultures. But um, in Anglo-Saxon culture, I'll just say, when you turn 18, 19, 20, your parents want you to live on your own. That's the general standard, and it was yeah. true for my family. In my case, when I told almost all of my relatives that I'm leaving to X, Y, Z, you know, they don't know the geography well, but I said, I'm leaving to this country and I'm going to stay there. And their uh, response was, oh, cool. <laughs> all right, all right. But I'll say one thing. Two cousins of mine, they really like the idea and they also want to do the same they want to go to philippines right right right, right. Island, for their own personal reasons and you know in in the beginning they would ask me a lot of questions oh how do you how did you do this how did you do that and that was that was the end of that and um but i don't think they are want to they're going to go because I, it's been five years and they still don't have their passport it's cool that you have set the example for people in your immediate family and your circles. The initial interest might be there, but ultimately they may make the mistake of sharing it with their friends and family, immediate family and get talked out of it. You know, if they had maintained contact with you and see you know, how your life changed and how happy you were, maybe it might have. But here's the problem with the American mentality mm -hmm. because is that. Everywhere else in the world is some poor, war-torn place. Mm -hmm. And if they know you're American, they're going to kidnap you. They're going to beat you and throw you some in some prison somewhere. 
and that's strong in their mind. And even if I showed them, I did show them all the photos, videos, my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. They just can't let that go. They right, they right, just right. they can't let it go because they see on the news all the time. Um, that country has been bombed. This country, this bad thing happened. That country there, so they just stay where they are and they don't do anything. So you are an American. American born American. And the reason I stress uh, an American born American is because you were born into the privileges and the uh, advantages that a lot of people aspire to acquire. Someone looking from the outside, let's say a foreigner who's been reading up on the life in America and aspires to, to come to America to live the dream. And they run into a fellow like Ken Marks who says, okay, you know, I'm out of here. And he's, and he's leaving to come to my country or another country. What does that say about the American dream? What is your response to someone who believes that your decision is making a, a negative statement about the American dream? The floor is yours. <laughs> Many people, when I have this discussion about leaving to another country, uh, usually this is one of the main questions they have and they don't say American dream but they understand mm -hmm. the concept and yeah. they try to explain why do you want to get rid of this my answer to them is it's not for everyone everyone individually has their own dreams when I read your book called Ducks in a Row okay. um, one thing that I found which is extremely true is no matter what kind of dream or success that you may have especially when we're talking about the American dream, it's never static. The American dream will not last forever. So even if you attain this dream of yours or you're working towards that dream, anything can happen. A natural disaster can happen. You can get fired. Maybe a war, uh, maybe the country will balkanize. Anything can happen and you can lose it just like that. So everything you worked on to attain this dream can disappear tomorrow. So it's better to find out what you want in life and go after that. You yourself know what's best for you and you go for that. I type. came across some articles through a website called Happier Abroad. And it was interviews with people who had come from India to live in America, pursuing the American dream. It was on a forum, so they were sharing their views on what it was like now being in America. A lot of the people from India stated that they didn't realize that there was basically no support system here. So they came from India where families are closer, where the community is supportive, where family members, you know, will support each other. And when they came to America, they realized that you're basically on your own. They were unhappier than they were back in India. But here's the sad part. They couldn't go back because for lots of reasons, and I've heard this from the Philippines, people from the Philippines as well, they couldn't go back because they would be looked at as a failure. They couldn't go yeah. back because everyone else back in India believes the American Dream Marketing yeah. Campaign, and they would find it, they would assume that there's something wrong with you for not being able to make it. Because this is what we've heard. America is, you know, the land of opportunity. It's easy. It's, the streets are paved with gold. So if you can't make it there, then there's obviously something wrong with you. So a lot of them end up being stuck in a, in a situation that they're very unhappy in, but they can't go back because of, you know, ego and, and pride and the expectations of their of their family members. I heard a similar thing from a Filipino friend of mine who finally got her green card, I believe it was, so she went to the States. And a few, after a few months, she wrote me an email and was saying, you know, that things aren't exactly what she was led to believe. You know, when she was growing up in the Philippines, uh, if I remember her words correctly, America is a land of rainbows and chocolate. And when she got there, she realized, you know, it was dark and gloomy and non-supportive and everyone is, you know, keeps to themselves. And it's not like the shows that she was watching on TV and, you know, things are expensive and she has to keep working all the time and there's no free time. So she realized that it's not what she was led to believe, not to disparage seeking your happiness here. But I would point out that there are people who live 
fulfilling lives in France. There are people who live fulfilling lives, you know, in the Caribbean. There are people who live fulfilling lives in Mexico who never, who never speak a word of English, who, you know, have no desire to move to America to, to live the American dream. People who can, who are born in America, who, as you had said, who will move to other countries to find their dream. So just want to let people know that the dream your dream can exist anywhere. And there's no one country that has a monopoly on making dreams come true. I want to uh, add one, one last story ahead. before we go. go. Um, there, there was a Japanese man that I've met. He studied in the United States and I met him also in Kazakhstan. And we had the same exact conversation, but he didn't have such a judgmental kind of questions or tones. And I said, oh, you're one of the very first few people who, where I would tell, you know, me leaving the U.S., giving up the citizenship, and you understood everything. And I said, how is that? And he said, because he's in the same boat. He left Japan to live in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and he's a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, wow, really? And he said, yes, He his dream was always to just be a simple doctor, just help sick people, poor people. And that's all he wants to do. And in Japan, the competition is very high. Mm -hmm. In the United States, it's very expensive to pay for, and many people can't afford it, and he can't do anything about it. But in Afghanistan, he can help as much as he wants. Everybody loves him. Everybody says, hello, Dr. Takeda, Dr. Takeda, and he, he loves it. That's what makes him happy, even though his living condition is not as comfortable as it was in Japan. But that's all all he cares about is just helping people healing the sick and that's all he wants that's what that was that's what makes him happy mm -hmm. and that's that's the person i really respect because you know he he left his comfort zone out of his society um of comfort and technology and and everything else and he went to a less developed one mm -hmm. yet he lives uh, he's more animated and alive than if he were staying yep. in japan Absolutely. And that's, that's a lot of people live like this, where they leave America, they leave the UK or Germany or wherever, and they go to another place that people wouldn't deem as a happy place. They mm -hmm. find it there. Excellent. All right. So on that note, I am going to let you go, Ken. Thanks for sharing mm -hmm. your amazing story. Um, you, you know, just for the people who are Let watching, see. there are a people who you may look at in these interviews and you may think that they are amazing, you know, people different. And in, in some regards, they are. Uh, not everyone is gonna, just going to get up and pick up and go to, you know, Kazakhstan. However, I would like to suggest, and I'm sure Ken will agree with, you know, that there's nothing that makes him special or superior than anybody else. It's simply just his desire to want to live life on his terms, his desire to want to be happy in a way that makes sense to him, <laughs> whether it makes sense to anyone else or not. And your story about Dr. Takeda is the same thing. Your happiness shouldn't be a list of checkbox items that other people submit to you. Do you have air conditioning? Do you have a high-rise apartment? Do you make X amount of dollars? When I quit my job as a civil engineer, I, my income dropped you know, tremendously. And there are people who would look at that as a step backwards. But for me, it is what it is. In my pursuit of happiness, I'm not going to let checking other people's check boxes decide for me what makes me happy. This is what makes me happy. You know, living on a little island in the tropics in the middle of the Pacific makes me happier than living in a high rise in New York City. And, you know, concrete, that's just jungle. <laughs> concrete jungle, jungle. Yeah. So, um, so again, it's just something I want to stress to people that, you know, you find happiness on your own terms, not as other people dictate to you. But Ken, thank you so much for spending the time. See you soon. And I'm, I'm sure we'll be doing other interviews. <laughs> Take Definitely. care.